What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're editing the style behind Paola Monaris Frankie, Monaris on Instagram. Now this style is fantastic, so cinematic, so let's go and check it out guys. So Paola Monaris is the Sony ambassador, she's a specialist in color grading, so she's supported by Lightroom, so let's check out her fantastic style. Now immediately when we look at her images, we think of movies like Inception, like Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, if you haven't seen these movies, you have to see them, they're just fantastic. Look at the color grading, the cinematography, the framing, everything in those two movies is just fantastic. And if we click on the images, immediately we see this aspect ratio. This is not even a 21 by nine, this is a more stretched out aspect ratio. So it adds to the dramatism and the cinematic effect. The color grading references Hollywood movies, of course. These photographs are taken with soft light in an overcast day in the shadows of the big city of New York, so they are fantastic. Another set of photographs in the subway that add to the dramatism, we can see a lot of teal and orange kind of look, which references a lot of cinematic styles from high-end cinema movies. So these images look so high quality that I would think they were shot with a very expensive lens, maybe shot from a movie, screenshots from a movie with a very high-end cinematic camera or cinema camera, but she just shoots with her Sony A7R 3 with some Sony Prime lenses, so she's a Sony ambassador. So these colors are obtained in color grading in post edition. So let's keep scrolling and this profile is just fantastic. So cinematic guys, we can see that she shoots mostly in overcast days within the city and she's not afraid to cross the blacks in some cases like in this one, we can see some raised blacks but very hard contrasty shadows. As we open up these images, the first thing that comes in mind is so many movies. The color grading is so cinematic, we can see it in all types of movings. These portraits of random people in the city are just unique and very fantastic guys. So that's the color grading that we want to achieve. Again, what a beautiful portrait, fantastic portrait, fantastic color grading of Monaris of Paola. So she also has her website and we can go check out different styles. In her website we can see some travel, some film, some work portraits everything that she does with different styles of color grading. The one that's more linked towards her Instagram style is her street style with this category that she's created about reflections. And here we can see some double exposures, some photographs with reflections of some cafes. And this is just fantastic guys. But the style that we're gonna analyze is the urban style that we looked at on her Instagram. So let's jump into Lightroom and edit this style guys. So these are the images that we want to edit guys, most of them are taken with a fast aperture. There are portraits of random people in the streets and some landscapes in the city scene. So we're going to use these two images as a reference. So in this case we have one that it's outside and it's an overcast day and we can see that the warmish tones pop up a lot more but still in the shadows the blue tinted tone remains. Meanwhile this other one is in the dark in the subway and we can see a lot more blues punching in tending towards the aqua tones. So let's start off with one and create a preset based on that and apply it to several other images. So let's start off with this portrait and we're gonna go to the develop tab. So the first thing that I'm gonna do to make this image a lot more cinematic, I'm just gonna crop it to a 21 by nine aspect ratio. And this is the aspect ratio that most of the movies are filmed in. So we get those black bars on top and the bottom and that adds to the cinematic effect. So I'm just gonna crop it right there and let's start editing. So white balancing that includes temperature and tint plus exposure and contrast. We're not gonna touch them. That will depend on each image. So in this case, let's start off with the highlights. The first thing I'm gonna do is decrease the highlights to make the image a lot more flat. The shadows in this case, we're not gonna move them. We're just gonna leave them. We don't want pure whites or very hefty whites, we want them all the way down to a minus 100 to make the image a lot more flat. And we're just gonna decrease a bit of the blacks to a minus 14. Next up, clarity and texture. We don't want the image to be a lot more punchy. If we go to extreme, we can see that the image has a lot more punch and we don't want that. We want something more cinematic and soft. For that, we're gonna go with a minus 11 for clarity and for texture with a minus six. Now vibrance and saturation, we're gonna go to a minus 15 in vibrance and a minus 10 in saturation. This will make the image a lot more flat, a lot more sepia toning, just a bit more cinematic, guys. Okay, then we come down to the tone curve. Now in the tone curve, we're gonna move two curves in particular, the RGB, which is the general curve, controlling the exposure, the contrast, and everything towards the highlights and the shadows. And then we're gonna move the blue tone curve. So let's start off with this one. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a point in the shadows and in the highlights right around there. And basically this point in the highlights is just gonna act as an anchor so the upper part of the curve doesn't move. So let's move down a bit of the shadows, ever so slightly. Now we're gonna give that fade effect to the blacks by moving this point up. Now we don't want to go to the extreme, otherwise it looks like log footage and we don't want that. We're just gonna move it ever so slightly up 
basically around there. Now we can see what we've done by clicking this point on and off. And yeah, it's acquiring those colors that we want. Next up, we're gonna go to the blue tone curve. And here again, one point in the shadows, one point in the highlights, and another point just around here, guys. Now, why did I add this last point up here? Basically, it's gonna act as an anchor point so the whites aren't affected and don't acquire that bluish tone. So first thing I'm gonna do is move the blacks just a little bit up. And as we can see, the blacks and the darkest parts of our image are acquiring that bluish color. Then the shadows are just gonna go up as well. Now we're just going to create the point in the middle so the mid-tones aren't affected and we're going to move the highlights up just a little bit around there. And as we can see now it's acquiring that bluish tone that Morais is very famous for. So we can see what we've done with tone curves. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just move the colors a bit. Now for hue we're just going to move the reds up to a 21. The oranges we're going to go towards a reddish tone to a minus 7. Meanwhile the yellows we're just going to move them a bit to a minus 14. Now we want the yellows to be a, a lot more orangey, we don't want them to be greenish, so we're going to go with a minus 19. And then we're just going to move the blues all the way a bit to the aquas to acquire those tones. Next up, in saturation, we're just going to desaturate everything with these values, with a minus 21 in the reds, minus 14 in the orange, and the greens we're going to go with a minus 11. Yellows, we're not going to touch it, and everything else to around a minus 16 or a minus 19. Now in luminous, we're just going to pop up a bit of the, the warmish tones of the image so they're a bit more light. So for the red, we're going to go with a plus 12, orange a plus 21, yellow a plus 19, and green a plus 13. Now you can play around with these values, but I suggest something like that. Next up, split toning. And in split toning, we're just going to add a color to the highlights and a color to the shadows. So in this case, I'm going to go with a 35 in the hue for the highlights. And as we can see, it's a very orangey tone. So I'm just going to put it to an 8%. Meanwhile, the shadows, we want a dark bluish tone, so we're going to go with a 248 and add a 25 of saturation. Now we can see that the image is very blue, but don't worry, we're just going to move the balance up to a 50 and then we're going to adjust the temperature to make it more acquainted to this situation in particular. Now detail sharpening, all those things, all the effects, that's down to you guys depending on how you shot the image. I'm not going to add any sharpening because like I mentioned, movies and cinematic styles don't have an increased sharpness and clarity. Also, images from Monaris do not include any big grain or anything like that. They're very clean images, but we are going to go all the way down to calibration, camera calibration, and we're going to change the base colors a bit. So let's start off with the reds. We're just going to move the reds up to a 23, and that's affecting the base colors in which the image is composed, the colors that the image is composed of. Meanwhile, the greens, we're just going to move them up to a plus 13, and the plus 12 in the saturation and this is just going to change a bit of the colors to make them a bit more cinematic guys and the blues we're just going to go with a minus four and a plus two on the saturation okay now the preset is complete now the image isn't finished but the preset is complete so we're going to save it just going to go to the right hit the plus sign on presets create presets and up here we type in the name and then down here we select everything that we want the preset to be composed of. So in this case I've deselected white balancing, exposure and contrast because that depends on each image guys. So we're going to create it and the preset is ready to apply to other images. But first we have to correct this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is unpop a bit of the exposure. And as we unpop the exposure and correctly expose the image we can see that the blues give away to the warmish tones. So I'm just going to move them up just a little bit to a plus 90. Then I'm going to move the tint and temperature to adjust the white balancing of the image, to correctly white balance the image. So this is basically the same process that we do in filmmaking. First we color correct the image and white balance it, and then we apply the effect. So, so I'm just going to add a bit more warmish tones, and I'm just going to decrease with a minus 5 the tint. And as we can see, the image is looking quite better. Now it does have these warmish tones that we're looking for, but still it remains with the bluish tones in the shadows and in the mid-tones. Now this image isn't finished. Now we want the subject to pop up a lot more. So in this case, I'm gonna zoom in and with a brush tool, I'm just gonna highlight the glasses. Now retouching is a very important part in editing your photos and in cinematography. In all movies, they retouch the images to make the faces of the subjects pop up a lot more. So when you edit your photos, it's always nice to pop up some things, particularly the faces in portraits, so the image pops up a lot more and, and your view is drawn towards the subject. So in this case, I'm just gonna add a radio filter on the subject. So basically, I'm just gonna do it a bit rough, guys, because we're short on time. The more time you take doing this, the better results you're gonna get. So I'm just gonna do it like that. 
and to correct a bit of the errors I'm just gonna feather it and I'm just gonna invert it okay we're not gonna move the exposure I'm just gonna move up the highlights and I move up just a bit of the shadow so the subject is more illuminated maybe in this case this part of the image is a lot more purplish so in this case I'm just gonna move the tint and as we can see it's a lot less purple this part so hit done and it's looking pretty good guys we can see these blues in the shadows which is what we're looking for now if we compare it to our reference image we can see these blue tones have passed into the shadows obviously her images are a lot more sharp mine is taken with an APS-C sensor camera hers is taken with a full frame with a 61 megapixel count so her images are going to be a lot more sharp even with the Instagram compression but still the colors is what we're looking for and the colors in the skin tones the colors in the shadows and basically the overall exposure of the images so I think we've done a good job guys now let's see how the preset applies on different images okay so next up we have this beautiful image of two random people I was stocking them in the cafe so let's apply the preset but first I'm gonna so you don't have to crop it guys it just adds a little bit more, more cinematic effect and I want to make a template just like she does with her images on her Instagram so once I've cropped it now I'm just gonna apply the preset and see how it works on this image and yeah this image is quite underexposed so in this case what I'm gonna do is just move up the temperature ever so slightly and as we move the exposure up we can see it gets too overexposed over here so I'm just gonna pull it down just a little bit move the tint a bit more to the greenish so it's not so purple and then I'm just gonna retouch a bit of the face of the subject so she pops up a lot more so I'm just gonna add with the brush tool just a little bit of exposure lift up a bit of the shadows and the highlights and hit enter now we can see the before and after and it's looking pretty good guys what do you think okay so let's do another one okay so we have this businessman walking out of the subway so let's apply the preset once again after I crop it okay so let's apply the preset Monaris and now the image is very blue that's basically because of the tone curve we don't have to move the tone curve to correct this we just have to make the image a lot more brighter if we move the exposure up we can see that those blue tones start to disappear and give us this cinematic effect if we move the exposure down if we underexpose the image everything turns to blue guys so I'm happy with that guys so if we look at the reference image apart from the obvious noise that is included in my photograph because I have a smaller sensor and the ISO is more prominent we can see that the bluish tones in this image she's changed them towards the aquas so how do we do that and create a variation we're just going to go down all the way down to split toning and move the shadows towards the aquas simple as that now the bluish tones are aquas so that's just a variation on the preset so you can save it as monaris point two or monaris aqua but it's basically the same effect so let's just do another one let's apply the preset and see how it performs in a more daylight situation okay so it's looking very blue and very purplish that's because i haven't corrected the white balance in and the exposure so let's expose the image a bit better apply a bit more contrast in this case and move the tint towards the greens so we lose a lot of that purple that I don't like. Then the temperature is going to go up ever so slightly. And I'm quite happy with those results. Maybe I would add a radial mask over her to make her pop just a little bit more. Happy with that. And now guys, I've gone ahead and in Photoshop created the template. So what do you think guys? In my case, I think that we nailed the style or we've come pretty close to her style. So leave me in the comments if you would change anything else. So guys, this is Monaris. Remember that the preset that we've just created, I've added it to the edit like preset pack link down below if you want to go check it out just a little disclaimer i'm not claiming any authority on her style this is just my interpretation on her color grading so if you want to support her and achieve her perfect like styles just go and support her buying her presets on her shop she'd be very thankful and talking about support guys we've reached the 10,000 subscriber mark i'm very thankful to you guys also this month is my birthday so to celebrate We've added a 50% discount to my vintage preset packs. Both of them have a 50% discount at checkout with this code down here. So if you want to support me, if you can support me in any manner, I'd be very thankful. Maybe I can buy myself a birthday present. So if you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.